YouTube. Uh, Facebook should be live. Facebook is live. Hi, Facebookers. Woo! Just a minute. We're getting YouTube up. Woo! <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Denise and Susan and Robin and Joanna and Lisa. Oh, holler and when... Kay and Tanya and Shelly and a bunch of other people. Is, so YouTube's live now, huh? No, it, that's, that's on it, Facebook. It looks YouTube like it. YouTube is now live. Hey, YouTube! Except I better turn some sound down someplace, shouldn't I? All right, I think we're ready to go, guys. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Jill from livingonadime.com with my trusty assistant, Dave, behind the camera. And I wish you guys could have seen the before, what we've been doing the past 30 minutes. It's like... <laughs> You we, guys would drop dead in yeah, I w We should just live stream the preparing for the day. live stream is what we should do. We went and first of all, we couldn't get anything up and running. We've been on the phone with Mike and he's been on the phone with somebody else 30 minutes before we were starting. We didn't think we could do it. We finally got up and running and Dave said, Nan, there's a fly. So I've been chasing around cameras and lights trying to catch this silly fly. Well, you were the one who noticed it first. And, and then, then I was like, oh, there's the yeah, fly. Yeah, and he's sitting there instructing me where to run next to catch the silly fly. Get the fly taken care of. And then there's a moth miller flying around. Mm -hmm. And then Dave comes running in. It's thundering and lightning, Nan. We're going to lose you our live Jack? stream. I mean, Jack. And we're going to lose the live stream. So it's like, oh, my goodness. We've just been scurrying, scurrying. So if you hear a really loud boom, it's probably just the thunder and nothing to worry about. Yes. Or if we just totally disappeared, you know we're under thunderstorm warnings and everything. Um, first of all, before we get off and started, I wanted to let uh, Bandana Grandma, Joanne P., and Veronica B. know that you've got packages, that your packages showed up. Uh, I haven't opened them yet. I'm kind of saving them for when uh, Tar and Mike come home. And if you've written any letters or anything, I'm kind of saving all those, too, until they get back. Um, and we're with the Homestead Network tonight. If any of you guys want to uh, put your link on the... Uh, if any of you guys want to advertise your channel from the Homestead Network, go ahead. We're open to that. Yes. Put, yeah, you can advertise from us this evening. That's perfectly fine. Go ahead and put your links up and everything. Um, Let's see, what are the other announcements? Oh, you know, I want to thank you guys for watching. I was, I was hungry the other day, and I thought, when I watch the live stream in Kansas, it's right at my dinner time, and sometimes I'm so hungry when we get started, and you guys torture me by telling me what you're fixing for dinner, talking about chocolate, but that's perfectly fine. I it just makes it worse that Dave is in the background eating. And food. Dave's in the background eating popcorn right now. But... And I appreciate that. But, you know, I was thinking, here I am hungry, and I would be so tempted sometimes watching the live stream to just walk away and go eat my dinner. And I think you guys faithfully watch us all the time. Not only that, but you guys in other countries. I mean, it's like the middle of the night, and you guys are up watching us. So we do appreciate you guys. You are so faithful, and, and we, we really want to thank you a lot for that. Tonight, yes, Denise, chocolate. You know me, I love my chocolate. Now, I think, um, uh, I think, Tar, I'm not going to be watching too many of the comments tonight. And, um, uh, Dave will still be on, but yeah, we're, we'll try to glance over once, once in a while. And, uh, every once in a while, but I think Tar and Mike are going to be on. So they're going to be trying to help with the comments, and then Dave in the background will be. Uh, th I'm just laughing. You guys are so sweet. I'm trying to watch, read your comments and talk at the same time. I just can't do it. Tar can maybe do it, but I can't do it very well at all. So um, anyway, yo, you guys are having storms in Australia too. I just noticed that Louise said that they're having storms. But tonight, I'll get started. We're going to do on French toast, and we're going to do, I'm going to show you just a handful of my quilts, and then I have a few really good buys that I got, and they're not all from thrift stores. Some of them are from just regular stores, but you can still get some good stuff even by not going to the thrift store. So this morning, I decided to add French toast into the mix because this morning, 
Dave came wandering in and he said, Nan, will you fix me some French toast, please, for breakfast? And I'm standing there looking she at him thinking... forced me to do the entire thing alone and by myself. He had to make French toast. And I'm looking at him thinking, okay, that old proverb or something, you know, where it says you give a teenager a piece of French toast and you or make it for him and he eats it for one meal. But if you teach him to make it on his own... No, that was a fish story. I know, but you teach him to make it on his own, he can fix it for the rest of his life by himself, right, Dave? Not if I don't have eggs. Not if you don't have eggs. So anyway, so I thought, boy, you're going to learn how to teach or learn how to make this French toast. And he actually did really good. And I was kind of glad I showed it to him this morning because he was asking some questions, really legit questions. I do this stuff. I've done this stuff. Do I dare tell you about what? 60, not quite 60 years I've been doing this stuff. And uh, if I look weird, it's because the bugs are starting to attack, I think. But um, I've been doing these things for that long. And I forget, some of the things I say come natural to me. But you have, but some people who've never cooked don't know what the terms are. And I want to tell you, if you write a comment on, the, on Living on a Dime, if you put a comment on there, or you even comment on here, Sometimes you'll say, you know, I know this is maybe a dumb question or a silly question. Don't ever think that because all of us had to learn and start someplace, you know. So there's never really a silly question. You just don't know. I didn't know, you know. So anyway, I was glad I did Dave because he asked me some questions and I knew I had to slow down and, and go a lot slower with some of this stuff. And <laughs> I have to tell you, okay, for the French toast... To start out with, use if you have a, like a square bowl, can they see this, Dave? This bowl? Oh, uh, yeah, they can see they it. They can see it? Too. Okay. I, I like to use a square bowl kind of like this because then if I have any of the stuff left over, I can put a lid on it and reuse it again, you know, the next day or something like that. But we went and cracked, first of all, we cracked the egg, which was quite an experience, but Dave got the eggs cracked in there. And he's standing there looking at this egg, and I thought, what is he looking at? And Jack's standing there looking at the egg. And Dave starts this dissertation about how the egg... All. What is it? What did you so, say? Hold up. I'm not, I'm not doing comments for a second. So, we learned this in school. It was like the one thing we ever learned that's actually good, other than aliens. But um, <laughs> the eggs are actually cells themselves... And they are very good, like, protein and stuff for you because of the um, vitamins and stuff they have inside of the cell for the baby chick. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> but he sat there, he was doing this whole dissertation about how an egg is a cell, and Jack's staring at this egg, he's staring at this egg, and I'm looking at this egg. By the time Dave is done, I'm thinking... I'm not sure I want to even eat an egg again. You know, I'm not sure if it's a cell or what it is. I just thought it was an egg. But anyway, so we had this whole dissertation, but Nan learned something new today. Oh. <laughs> so, but anyway, to start out with, um, the recipe is in, Tara thought, she's sweating bullets, she thought I would forget. It's in Dining on a Dime, and it's on page 55. So uh, if you guys have the cookbook, then you'll know it's in there. But, <laughs> so then, but I'm going a little bit different on the recipe. It's the same recipe. I'm just cutting it back a little bit just to show you how to do it. You put the egg in a bowl, and then you just whisk the egg up. Can they see it down or up, Dave? Which do I need to do? Hold up, mate. Oh, I can, yeah. And I want to tell you here, when I said to whisk the egg, a lot of people immediately go over and get one of these things to wh whisk the egg. Try not to use any more utensils in the kitchen than you have to. I have to hand wash my dishes, so I'm a lot more careful and everything. And so don't use any more. A fork is perfectly fine. I'm going to be to whisk this egg up with, and I'm going to be using the fork for other things. So don't dirty a whole whisk. whisk. So when I say whisk, just beat the egg up. Beat it to death. Once you get the egg in, I will pour the milk. And I don't know what ingredients. The ingredients are, like I said, are in the book, Dine on a Dive, page 55. I just do this by eyeball now. 
Except I'm sitting down and it's driving me crazy. Can you change the camera, Dave? Yeah, I can lift it. Thanks. So then I just added this milk. You can kind of add more or less milk. Sometimes people like their French toast a little eggier than others. It's all in your taste. It's, yes, it's all in your taste. Now I'm adding just a little bit of sugar. Not much. And oh, cinnamon. Dave's oh, okay. <laughs> back there giving me no, all kinds of instructions on how morning, to cook this. <laughs> this morning she made me mix them separate. So like mix the cinnamon and one. Yeah, and the and sugar one separate. And the sugar at a different time. And I'm just doing them together. Then I put just a tiny dash of salt. It just enhances the flavor, salt always does. And then about a half a teaspoon. Did that. I know we forgot it this morning, but it still tasted it good. It still tasted good. It delicious. did still taste good, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, a half a thing of vin uh, vanilla is what I added to that. So you see, we left the vanilla out this morning. The boys didn't even know any difference. So it doesn't, you don't have to be too fussy. Now on the bread that I use, I've been letting this sit, sit out most of the day and it's just a little bit Hard. If you have soft bread, just set it on the counter for maybe 15, 30 minutes if you want. Uh, another type of bread that's really good is French toast uh, or French bread, harder, crustier bread. Uh, also, that's really good with this is raisin bread. And I'm not forgetting the pan back there on high, everybody. <laughs> I hope I'm not. Raisin bread, if you, have, if you have any bread that's starting to get older and dried out, that is perfect for French toast. You could use cinnamon bread, slice up cinnamon bread, and dip it in this. So those are just some ideas. And I think in the book, too, um, I'm waiting for that to get warm. We have like banana bread on that same page and, um, oh, French toast sticks also. Now... I know, Mike. I'm sorry. I've got to turn my back for just a second. I'm going to dip this bread in here. Can they see it, Dave? Okay. Uh, yeah, just hardly. Not really. They can't see you dipping it. They can't? Is it too high? No, it's just they can't really see it now when you're dipping it. Can you, they can't see it all when I'm dipping it, huh? No, if you could get it like... Up there. To the camera. Where? Up to the camera. Please. Up to the camera. Yeah, okay. So now, see, I just dip it in here like this. And then I add it to the pan. And this probably makes about six okay. pieces of toast, maybe, the amount I made today. And then I'm just, I'm going to turn it way down, quite a ways down, to about medium. Uh, not real, super low, but down to medium is a good way to cook it. Now, what I do with this sometimes, it seems to work really, if you have a problem with your French toast being a little bit doughy or not fully cooked in the center, take a cookie sheet or a jelly roll pan and cut, I put foil on it so I don't, ha so I don't have to wash the pan when I'm done. And uh, after these fry up and they get brown on each side a little bit, laid on the pan and I put it in the oven oh 350 325 something like that and I just put it in there for about five to ten minutes usually while I'm cooking the other ones I just have some in there cooking now I just kind of look to see these aren't quite brown so I'll turn it up just a tad that way when you cook them in the oven like that for just a few minutes it puffs up they seem to puff up and it gets the center cooked really really good I didn't like the boys this morning. I didn't really have to put it in the oven because they just seemed to cook fine on the pan. Oh, they forgot to do that too. Mm -hmm. But they still tasted but they good. But they still tasted good, didn't they? You can yeah. do that or you don't. It's just it was easier to cut without the oven. Yeah. And another thing too is like one time I had four of the grandkids and they were little. They were only like four, five, six, something like that. And so I was making French toast for all of them. I thought they'd eat two whole pieces, you know, because they were tinier. And so I made up two, two for each one. They all wanted more. So I made up two more for each one, another eight pieces. So now I'm up to what, 16 pieces for them. And um, I ended up for all of them making 24 pieces of French toast, one right after the other. 
If you have to make a lot like that, it really helps then to put them in the oven, and that way they can keep warm while you're trying to get the, all of them finished up and to eat, eat the meal all at the same time. Jack, you want to come taste the French toast? So that's how easy French toast is. There's really nothing to it. You can take and put syrup. You can put butter with powdered sugar on it. You can take some fresh berries or make some uh, like strawberry syrup or blueberry syrup or regular syrup. Dave is weird and, and occasionally he doesn't even eat it with syrup or anything. Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Here it is. I thought you didn't right. want it. Oh man. Here Jack. I thought I was going to get both pieces. There you go. There's some butter and powdered sugar over there if you want it. Mm -hmm. Or you can just try it there. Well, can you put the butter and powdered sugar on? I'll probably eat it a little bit. Just take a bite of it and then we'll fix it in a minute, okay? I have to respond. That's mine. I have to respond to comments. Yeah, just set that over there for Dave. It's not. It's lovely. It's lovely? Yeah. Are you on the camera? So is it lovely? Yeah. It's What's, hap What's happening in a couple of days? My birthday. Oh. Um, oh. Can you put the powdered sugar and butter in there? Yeah, you will you can, but you'll have to try to do it on your own if you can until we're done, okay? Okay. All righty. And set sugar? that over there. It's in that little bowl. Can you set that over there for Dave, please? You should have seen them. <laughs> you should have seen them. Mom and Dad would have had a heart attack okay, if they so, saw them. So, should I explain what I did to my... What did you do? So, this morning, I was telling Ann... Man, we're going to get a stroke from all this powdered sugar because we would like take a spoonful from the bag and then spread it over the top of one thing of toast and lift that one up and then spread it on the It wasn't a small one. spoonful. It was like, hold up, let me see if we, wait, no, not quite that big, about this big. Heaping. And it was heaping. Heaping, heaping for each slice, not for so, all of them. Yeah. And we discovered something this morning. We it decided... Doesn't... That that study they did that sugar makes kids hyper, it it's doesn't. not true. Nope. They have just been ha inhaling sugar since Nan's been here, and they've been quiet as mouses. Yeah. Until the live stream was starting, and then. So it's it's good. As mice. Is it good? Yeah. Really good? So, you know, you can do this French toast for supper in the evening, and besides breakfast, it's really easy to make, and there's not much to it. Uh, and it uses up... It uses up that dry, stale bread. Uh, you know, I say over and over again, they, people waste about 50% of the groceries they buy. Tracy says happy birthday the, to you. Oh, you're getting some happy birthday. Oh. Yes, you may. Okay? That sounds good. Except, Jack, maybe... Okay, so I, a few people have been asking about my quilt, so I'm going to go ahead and show you some quilts real fast. And then... Um, we will take, and I'll sh give you some hints on, um, or show you some things I bought on s for a good price. Okay, this here, first quilt, here it is, Jack, here we go. Well, here, you take this in. Can you take that in for now? Hold that up. This, now these first quilts don't get by the burn. Oh, do you want me to help? Can you do that off? with this one? Don't burn yourself. This is Dave's quilt. He made this when he was about Jack's age or a year younger. And it's he even did, got a back. It's even got a back on it. Yes, yes it's got a back. It's, it's a back. really worn. He's just worn it to death. I went and put some yo-yos, what we call yo-yos. You're supposed to be not holding it. You're supposed to be showing it for planets. Dave loves all oh, kinds of... Oh, this one's falling off. I will have to sew it. Re -sew it Dave, will have, Dave loves planets. So you can see the center fabric. But he did sew it all. He sewed every bit of this. And he did a really good job. He was just Jack's age. It was his first sewing project. Yes, you may. Yes, you may. And so he did a really super good job. Then this one here, when the kids are first born, I crochet them an afghan. And... Uh, I wanted a blankie instead. And <laughs> <laughs> I give them a little, well, what I give them, make them an afghan because it's faster. But then for their first birthdays, I always give them what I call a drag around blankie. And you can tell these things have really been drug around. And the I'm other showing side these, shows even worse. I was going to show you these because they like their names. 
when they start getting older and they can see their recognize their name, they like to have their names put it on somewhere. But the most interesting part of this quilt. Oh, this is the chewy one. This is Dave's quilt, his first, first year. He still has it in, tucked in the bed with him. And he chewed. He kept chewing the quilts when Tara would get when so frustrated. When I was frustrated. little. Yeah, he'd chew the quilt. So he'd chew them and Tara gave me the quilt. She said, can you patch it? So this here patch goes all the way down here. And that's the first patch I put on. Well, then he chewed through the patch. So I added another patch. <laughs> so then he chewed through other spots. Here's another patch. Here's another patch. Here's another patch. Here's another one. Here's one down here. This thing is just held together pretty much by patches. I need to repatch. I need to repatch. So you don't I just, bite anymore, I you know, I just thought you might get a kick out of seeing how this is the most patched it's quilt. It's still I really think nice and fluffy, though, even though it's been <laughs> worn to death. It's really nice. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, and then this here. Sorry, guys, I didn't mean to go me. away from the camera. I think I can get these now. Dave, well, I guess thanks. That is yeah, short. it's smaller. This here is is uh, Jack's first year quilt. So this is seven seven years old. But I thought you'd find this interesting if you guys need ideas. This was a jungle quilt I made him, and I took and I uh, put fur, used the fur for the binding, and then applique his name with the fur, too, just to add a little something different. And they like to touch things. So this was soft at one point, and it gives them something to touch, soft and feel. So I'll hold it so you can see it for a second. They won't juggle it. So that's Jack's. I also put, I like to put hearts. So on the bottom, I put hearts across the bottom. More touchy and feeling. Hi, Emily. Hey, man. You know? Hey, YouTube and Facebook. Emily said hi to everybody. Love you all. <laughs> now, I think Tara has said, shown this before. And this is the newest one I made her. And it is her gnome quilt. I'm having a little bit of hard time showing this and talking. But here, you talk. Can you help here? Okay. Here's oh. the top. Oh, oh snap. Oh, I'm getting the long. Yeah. Nifty, so fifty bits. This so here I made out of pajamas. Two pairs of Tara's pajamas. The these gnomes were pajamas that were too small. And the yeah. plaid was pajamas that didn't fit. This here is a pocket. I don't know if you guys can see. I took the pocket off the pajamas and that way she can tuck tissues or pens or notepad or a book in there. If she's not feeling good, she can keep the tissues in there. Can you hold it a little bit still maybe, Dave? There. Oh, man. There you go. So this is her known quilt. Okay, thank you, Bob. Oh man, I want to I'm gonna struggle with it now. Now my latest I only got two more. My latest <laughs> one is this one. And I just brought these to work on while I'm here. And this is going to be a wall hanging. I had a bunch of scraps. And so I, um, I went ahead and wanted to get rid of some of the scraps in my scrap bin. And it's a log cabin. And that's, I didn't have a pattern. I had to do the math on it to figure out how to do this thing. And it, it could be a baby blanket too, if you needed it to. What? The quilt. <coughs> you wall you used math? I used math. You didn't know Nan was so smart, did you? Wow, impressive. And this last one was, once again, I was trying to get rid of my scrap bin. I, it gets so full. I save everything in my scraps. And this is my latest top that I just finished like a couple of days before I came out here. So, I don't... This is all... I just used a square. So if you ever want to learn to sew, you don't need to start with anything complicated. These are just the same size squares all sewn together. And uh, I don't know, Dave, am I going to, do I sew by hand? Dave, you need to check some of these for me, please. Um, do I sew by hand? You know, I do both. I really, this one here I sewed on the machine, but I'm gonna quilt it by hand. I have, I do a lot of piecing that I piece by hand too, just to have something to take with me in the car or when I'm at the doctor's office and things like that. So I do both of them. I don't um, do any machine quilting. I know how to do it, but I usually do all my quilting by hand. 
So now, Anita also wanted to know, do you hand quilt? Is that the same as? Yeah, hand quilt. Yes, I do. <laughs> I do all my quilting. It's, the boys is I tied their quilts just because the drag around blankies are going to disintegrate before long, and I didn't want to put a lot of effort. But my other ones, like um, this one here, I let's see. I don't know if you can see it. <coughs> For you quilters, you might be curious to see. Let me see how close I can get this. Uh, where's one that I've got done? Yeah, see, I've got this hand quilted here. I've started quilting that. Down here's another one. Oh, you should sew something. Am I holding it still enough for them to see? Um, yeah. So mm -hmm. you guys can see it? Yeah. So yeah, I do do both. What are some of the other questions? Uh, Re Renee, I think. Uh-huh. Or Rainy, I think is how you say it. Um, it says, do you enter any of your quilts in contests? I don't. Uh, she does do a quilting bee, though. Yeah, I do a quilting bee, and I did quilt guild and that type of thing. But I, I don't know. I don't. Maybe I don't have enough confidence or something in my. And you get have to be really. They're really technical. I mean, you can't do this and you can't do that. And me, I just kind of relax and sew them. So I don't. I don't do the. Um, the contest or anything. What do you use for the inside? What I I use batting, but for the kids, it's just everyday like Tara's known quilt and things like that. I keep a huge supply of flannel sheets. I have some other odds and ends of types of sheets that are thicker and fluffier, and I use those for the the for things that aren't heirloom quilts that are just like picnic blankets and stuff. I use old flannel sheets that are worn out then for the better ones i use just regular batting so let's see any more questions uh let me pick up um, a couple of these yeah dave no i don't see any no more qu questions on youtube nope okay now um let me move some of this stuff out of my road so I didn't want to do a whole bunch on sewing stuff, but this might give you some more ideas. You need to you need to look around the house. You need to think if I need something, how can I make it do? We kind of we kind of tend to just take the checkbook and go out and buy what we need or the credit card. I mean not the checkbook, but the credit card, we just go so buy it. Ha checks. <laughs> checks, yeah, I know. <laughs> um so you have to start thinking of how can I make this work if and yeah. not spend money. What? That says my question is who has the best son-in-law in the whole world? Who has the best son-in-law? Ha, huh, funny son-in-law. I don't know. I haven't I haven't asked. I need to ask some of my friends at the Quilby if they have a good son-in-law. <laughs> but um, so instead of here's Emily. Did you need in here? No, I just wanted to make an appearance. Here she is. Hey guys. She's been working like crazy, haven't you? Yup. Did the fun one today though. I was teaching some yoga. She teaches yoga. I did that. Bless you, Dave. Thanks. So I love all of you. I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> yeah, she's been gone quite a bit doing her working and everything. But so you need to check and see can I make do with something. I made myself this board. Sewers will know what it is. These are special cutting mats that you have special cutters that you use. This thing would cost probably about 20, maybe $25 if I bought it like this. So what I did was I asked the ladies at my bee, does anybody have a warped cutting board they're gonna throw out, which is this. You, they have big ones and they get warped and they just throw them in the trash. And one lady did, so I took it and I cut out part of it, the part that wasn't warped, and I took a cardboard, a thick cardboard, I put batting down, and then um, I did buy some heat resistant stuff. You can get Joanne Fabrics, it was about 50 cents is what I have worth in here. The fabric was free, and I wrapped the, the cardboard in the batting and the fabric and just taped it down, and then I glued this board to the other side of it. Now I have an ironing mat when I go to my different quilting things. I have an ironing mat, and a cutting board combined. And it cost me 50 cents. And I wouldn't have even had to put that uh, heat resistant stuff in there necessarily. I just did just to be on the safe side. So, you know, 
I was needing one of those because I, when I go to my bees, I always need something to iron on, but I didn't want to spend that kind of money for it. Now this here is my quilting hoops, and look at the thrift store for sewing things, for all kinds of things, everybody. You can, you can find gardening things at the uh, thrift store, but the price tag was on this, and I tore it off because I didn't know I was going to show you guys, uh, but... It was $1.98, and these are really pretty sturdy compared to some of them. Some of them aren't done very well, but this is a really good quilting frame. And it's a smaller one, so I can take it whenever I travel and do that, that type of thing. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, thank you, Robin. That's so sweet of you to say that. She says we're doing a pretty good job. Dave and I sweat bullets before we start doing this. Another thing that you can use for, uh, besides sewing, you can use these in the kitchen, is whenever you, these, these are for, like I said, for cutting fabric now. They're extremely sharp and they cause that excruciating pain into your hand. That is a wicked blade. And we have to hold the ruler on top of the cutting board over the fabric and you cut like this. So dangerous. And I don't know how many quilters have cut fingers very badly just from the um, from these silly rotary cutters. So they came out with what they call safety gloves. Well, the safety gloves can be, let's see, what were those? $18, I think, for one glove. And that's quite a bit of money. I didn't want to spend $18, so it would be cheaper than an emergency room visit, but I didn't want to, um, to spend $18 for a safety glove. Well, I thought about, um, Using a coupon at Joann's for 50% off, that would get it down to $9. But I was dinking around one day. I've got to sit down here for I've got to sit down here for a second. I was dinking around one day and is the camera okay, Dave? Did I sit down? I didn't know if I missed you. Um, I I was looking on the internet and I found cutting gloves, and these are kitchen cutting gloves. That they, they were six dollars and you got two of them compared to $18 and getting one. And they're the exact same type stuff that prevents cutting, your hand getting cut. So I, you can buy, look at other places when you're needing things like this and you can save sometimes a lot of money because they know quilting is a big thing. So they up the prices on a lot of this stuff where it doesn't need to. Now the only thing different about these is the quilting gloves had like, um, yeah, Michael, your son-in-law, says, Zoinks, my mother-in-law with a blade. <laughs> my mother, yeah. You better be good to me, son-in-law, when you get home. <laughs> um, but the only thing different with these, they didn't have little uh, rubber nubbies to stop the slippage. So I took, I had some puffy paint. You can buy it for like a dollar, I think, at Joann's. But I happen to have puffy paint on hand. And I rubbed some of that puffy paint on here and it gives me traction and it does the same thing as the little rubber nubbies. So for $6, I got two gloves. I gave one to Tara that she's supposed to be using so she doesn't chop her finger off in the kitchen. And because there, there was a right and a left. And then I kept the left handed for me for my sewing. So look at other places to find things. Also, if you use these, you can use these rotary blades for a lot of different things, but, um, I should stop playing with it. I'm going to cut my finger. <laughs> You're hey, all... Give David. Um, huh? Give David it. Give, yeah, give David it to play with, I'm that's sure. That's a very good idea. Uh, yes, I don't think that is a good idea. These blades are about $4 each when you have to replace the blades. And 4 to $5, just depending. So I went to Harbor Freight. I hope, BJ, I said that right. Harbor Freight is yep. kind of like a tool place. That's yeah, and I think you could probably find them at a hardware store like Lowe's or, you know, Ace or something like that. And I happened to be going look in the carpet department with the carpet uh, where you tools where you lay carpet down. They have special tools to lay carpet down. They had these exact same blades there. You got two blades for $1.99 compared to one for about $4.00. So really scope things out. Another thing I got at the hardware store was I, a lot of people are doing the Dollar Tree containers. You know, they can go to the Dollar Tree and get, and that's fine. You know, they're ni nice, but I look at their closet and they've got like 50 bins in there. And I'm thinking they just spent $50 to organize their closet. And I cringe because you can do it cheaper. And I got a container for, um, 
I was needing for some of my small sewing things and different things. They had a little container, it was about six inch square container, and it had was divided into several little sections inside. And it was 99 cents, which is about the same as at the Dollar Tree. But the thing was, this was full of different size screws. So I not only got the container that I was gonna use for my sewing, but then I had a whole bunch of screws. I got another one, the same size and everything, that was full of washers and uh, oh nails was the third thing so i got three of these containers for three dollars but instead of just getting the empty containers i went and got screws and and uh, nails and washers and everything so check these other places out it, just for even if you need stuff for the kids in their playroom tiny toys and little things check the containers out in these different places um let's see what else knitters 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 I do knitting and I get so oh, frustrated. Wait. I have one. I have one. Oh, uh huh. Patricia, she she hand wants to know how many layers can you cut through with the cutter? You know, I saw one lady do eight layers. I don't think I would do that many. I do four sometimes. But two is the optimal. Two is the best if you want to get a real accurate cut. Two, but you can do four. Like like the square, the one with all the squares that I just showed you. Now, I did that one with four layers because I wasn't too worried about it. So, let's see. Oh, oh, you do, Joanne? Joanne says she has a ra ragged blade, edge burl blade that makes holes. You know, the um, if you want to crochet the edge around a piece of fleece, you can get one of these, something like this, and it rolls along the edge of the fleece and pokes holes in it, and then you can get the crochet uh, hook in there easy to do the crocheting around the edge. Um, uh, yes, you. we did used to use scissors. I used to use scissors all the time, and I'd make little cardboard templates, and I would trace around them, and then I would cut around them. You can still do that when you're starting out. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you find you're going to like it, you might want to get a couple of these other tools. As a matter of fact, I was gonna, I'll was. i get back to you, Nairs. I haven't forgot you. I went and get get all my uh, blades and and mats. I got a mat, cutting mat at the thrift store. Oh, this was so wonderful! It was two dollars and ninety eight cents, and I checked it out at Joanne Fabrics. The same exact size mat was fifty six dollars, and I got it for two dollars and ninety eight cents. I got a smaller mat and this rotary cutter. For a dollar ninety-eight, it was still in the package, never been opened, and it, the cutter and the mat came together for a dollar ninety-eight, and I think it would have been like thirty dollars maybe for that size of mat, and the and the cutter would have been at least thirty dollars for that. So check your thrift stores, and if you want to start out quilting, you can just use the old, the way we used to do it, where you would trace around the template, and um, then cut it out and everything. Do I do? Yes, Stephanie. I do use a sewing machine for. Um, uh, just a second. Let's see. Michelle said she got these same gloves. She worked at a window manufacturer and got them for a dollar. Yeah, it's on Facebook. I. Oh, is he okay? Good. I do use a sewing machine. As a matter of fact, the the quilt I showed you with all the squares on it, that's totally done by machine. But then I'll hand quilt it. So I do both back and forth, um, equal amount pretty much. Let's see. And Mike, you lost your job. <laughs> uh, now back to the the um, knitters. I when I knit, sometimes the needles. I know you can buy different sizes, but I I back to making do with what I had. When I knit, sometimes the, the way I the type of knitting I do is continental, and it will catch a lot of times in the yarn or whatever and it would frustrate me so my husband did this for me years ago he just and I did well I did this pair he did another pair for me and I, lo and I lost one of them so I had to do this myself I just had a regular long pair of knitting needles and chopped them off I think I used I didn't use a hacksaw I think I just used a, a nipper thing and then I put some little bit of rubber. I had some rubber tubing I just stuck on the ends. That seems like a good hobby for me to do. Knitting? I think you should start taking up knitting, Dave. Maybe it would calm you down before the last Because I'm always sitting here doing nothing. And, I'm <laughs> and that way board. you could knit, huh? <laughs> um, let's see. Can you show on this? 
you know, Stephanie, we, we've been having a lot of people wanting me to show sewing machine basics. And Tar and I have been talking about doing a video on that. So we may try to do something like that because I know a lot of people have asked for that. Um, let's see. Any, no more questions on yet. So anyway, adapt your knitting needles if you have to. Also, go to your thrift store to find your knitting needles. I got a packet of six pairs of knitting needles for $1.98. You can tell the prices at the thrift store usually do $1.98, $2.98. That's what their prices usually are. So get your knitting needles. Did you have one, Dave? No. Oh, okay. Oh, Katie Strange says you need to teach all the boys how to knit. I should. I've you taught them. Should. I'm taught them on the sewing machine, but I haven't done the knitting yet. That's so how I sewed my blanket. I didn't know if I wouldn't have the patience or if they wouldn't have the patience. I haven't decided that. But <laughs> so now here's one other little thing I was going to show you. I use all my scraps. This here, I love this fabric, and it's a needle holder, and a little tiny bit of scraps. And I put my needles. Whoops, got upside down needles in here and my needle threader and then I put some pins in here it's just the right amount for me to carry my purse and it's just I this here is a batting I had a little scrap of batting you I don't want to throw yourself. huh you look like you're close to the edge don't poke yourself oh it won't it won't hurt yeah. um I don't throw any scraps away this here I use this I love this fabric I use that tiny scrap I went and sewed a little bit of lace around it add a stamp on the inside and then a little button for the outside. So I love these little needle holders. I've made two or three of them that I keep in different spots every place. Um, Diana Darling wants to know, to learn knitting, is it best to go to a class or can you learn by book? I, yeah, actually, what I would do, I've been going on YouTube. I find that you, they have some really, you may have to check out like three to four before you find one that you can understand clearly. But they have got some excellent knitting and crocheting things on YouTube. And what you can do is on YouTube, you can pause it. If you go to the class, you can learn a lot. And it does help, I guess, for me to save money. You know, I don't like to always go to classes. And you can do a class. But what I worry about is then when I leave the class, nobody's there to show me. And I usually forget the things, even if I take careful notes with YouTube videos it's free with, and yeah you can go back. yeah with the YouTube videos they're free and you can pause it until you figure out what you're doing and another way try to find somebody who does knit and crochet and ask them you I, if somebody came to me personally at my house that my, one of my friends or a neighbor or somebody said would you show me how to knit I would love to knitters crocheters quilters even sewers, they love gardeners. They all love to share their skill with other people. And so don't be uncomfortable or embarrassed to go ask if you know somebody that does it. So, um, Diana Case wants to know, Jill, do you use a running hand stitch? For, for just hand sewing. For the quilting or for mm -hmm. hand sewing. Yeah, I do, I do use a running stitch for piecing, hand piecing, if that's what you mean. Yeah, I think that's what she meant. Um, I don't see anything else. There's nothing? No. So. Keep going. Okay. Well, I'll. We should do a live stream of trying to teach David how to. How to knit. knit. Oh, that would be interesting. How very, to te very teach David. And for those of you that do quilt, you've maybe already seen this. Or applique, or even if you do any kind of craft it's to applique. It's It is just a glue stick. I've almost stopped pinning all my applique because I use a glue stick to instead of place of pins to glue my applique things on. Uh, it doesn't hurt your needle and it holds it in place without you getting poked for everything. I guess I'll just have to do a, a thing on sewing. Uh, embroiders, those that you do embroidery or quilters, this is called a, a fuse, fission pin, fusion pin. That's the name on it. Does it have the name on it? It's called a... Friction. friction. Friction is what it is. Friction pin. Friction. And I love the... F-R-I-X-I-O-N. Yeah, F-I... F-R-I-X-O-N. And I love these because you can draw your embroidery patterns or uh, your quilting patterns on. And when you're done using them, you run the iron over it and the pin just totally disappears. Now, I like anything, any pin I use, I test it on a chunk of the fabric first just to make sure because there's always that rare one. I didn't mean to do all this sewing stuff. Sorry, guys. 
Yes, oh, uh, D Donna said that t was telling Joanne you can donate to nursing homes. Probably 50, 75% of my quilting are charity quilts. And if I did Afghans, it would be, uh, oh, I do do for our church too, for knitting and crocheting. Uh, we don't, I do scarves and hats and stuff to donate. T you can't believe the places you can donate and ask somebody at your church that call the church office they always usually have some places that need things um, but we give our charity quilts to children's homes uh, like we just did some uh, even the fleece blankets we did our church did to women's sexual abuse and coming out of sexual trafficking trafficking women and children they said those blankets mean so much because they come out of these places and they have nothing and for some reason that blanket just comforts them i you know it just is a comfort well look at the boys' blankets how worn I'm, they were they love even dave's sitting over there with the blanket now hugging mom's it no <laughs> they mean so much if you have tornado vic victims hurricane victims children's homes um People uh, have, like, lost a family member or something. Pregnancy crisis centers, they can all use all these things. So, um, yeah, so we, I, I give, and if you can't, if you don't know, too, another place is to go to your, just call your quilt guild. If you are, I, there's usually a quilt guild in most states, huh? There's a quilt guild in most places, and if you call them, they will accept anything. As a matter of fact, our quilt guild was asking for more fabric. We take fabric donations, thread donations. If you have somebody that maybe passes away and has a lot of sewing, give it to your local quilt guild because we use them. And even our church has a quilting group that does them. We take that fabric like we took it to the women's prison and they taught the women at the prison how to make quilts. And then those quilts were all donated to different charities and stuff. So it's just amazing what you can do with these things. If you're at home, if you're bored, if you're an empty nester, learn something like this. And you need to get busy doing this, you know, donating to these places because they really need the help. Um, scarves for the homeless. Yes, we do lots of scarves for the homeless. Um, they said even some schools have kids that have no scarves or hats. Uh, what was I trying? Oh, an alcohol and drug rehab places need lots of scarves and hats, hats and things. Um, oh, uh, Charlene. Charlene said that uh, she has a loom, a knitting loom, and she did 70 hats for missions. Yes, we send them to missionaries. Um, because we had an uh, orphanage over there and somebody was going to go over there so our group our knitting group did like 200 of them we had like two weeks to get 200 hats and hats done up and they didn't want to just send them to a handful we had to send one for every child so there is so much so much out there um you know nadine you were talking about you love crocheting cotton washcloths things like that are great to donate to uh like churches or different places where they're making up, uh, what do I want to call, like boxes or bags to give was, to homeless shelters to tuck was, in. Oh, I forgot what it was called. It was some kind of uh, church winter thing where they would put everything in like a shoe box. The shoe box at Christmas time where yeah. they do the shoe boxes but it's that they. Specific. Yeah, it is. I forget now what it's called. My mind went blank. Yes, preemies, Karen. You can t give them to hospitals for preemies. Not only that, but cancer patients. Um, they can use uh, quilts and, and different things that just, you know, can to keep them warm. And we send to also um, veterans. We do a lot. We send to the veterans' hospitals, uh, do the throws and things like that, that they give them out to vets. I mean, it's just endless. We could keep, our group could keep doing till you know, till doomsday, and we still wouldn't be able to get, you know, do enough. So, uh, Julie says her women's group make fleece blankets for a uh, foster closet group for children. Each child chooses his or her own, and second place quills are given to the areas for people that have recently lost their home to fire. Yes, fire victims is another good one. Also, if you're good at quilting or crocheting, 
give them to the children's homes or different places and they can sometimes use it if they don't need the blankets itself they will auction them off so they can use some money and they get good money for some quilts a lot of times yes Dave did you need me no. Louise what is for dinner I'm not sure what's pizza. for dinner Dave says pizza but He's starting to grow pepperonis on his face, so I'm not sure I should do pizza Actually, again. I'm probably going to be eating some French toast since she taught me how to do that. <laughs> I don't know if you heard him, but he said he's going to maybe eat French toast since I told him how to do that. So, I Speaking of dinner, I was going to tell you real quick, uh, I, either Friday, it's the boys' birthday, but I'm so I'm not sure, Friday or Monday, uh, I'm going to try to do... Uh, do show do a lot on our quick quick and easy menus i had to look at the that we have now i'm not sure we have this in book form anymore but we do have it in ebook oh that's okay um but you know this has you can already see i got things bookmarked to tell you about on these different lots of recipes people don't realize we've got tons of recipes in here it's just like a miniature dining on a dime we've got 65 menus we put them in a block like this and it's got a whole menu listed so I'm going to go through this and give you some menu ideas on either Friday or Monday I don't know which day for sure so popcorn dad says popcorn <laughs> dad they've already eaten the popcorn they've already eaten like two two wait no i've eaten three bags technically joanne wants to know when the family's going to be back um update on bj too i'll give you that yeah, we don't know probably. he's still he's still seeing more doctors and uh we're hoping the first of next week uh we're, we don't know for sure but we're hoping they were they had another appointment scheduled for a week from tomorrow, which they didn't want to stay that long. And Mike said they'd sat in this doctor's office all day waiting to get that appointment changed to see if there was a cancellation. And finally, they were going to have to leave. And they asked the gal, is there one? She said, no, I checked an hour ago. There was nothing. So you, there was no cancellations today. She said, well, I'll look one more time just to make sure. Would you believe there was a cancellation? And it's for tomorrow morning they're going to be able to get in. So that was good news. But... But we're still kind of, we thought they were going to leave this morning, but that didn't work out. So, uh, let's see. Yes. Yes, Nadine. Children's <laughs> hospitals are great for that. Yes, Dave? Oh, I, you're choking. You're not talking, huh? <laughs> oh, we've had an interesting, it's just nothing bad has happened. Just little things like if I'm, Dave asked me before we went on, he said, Nan, you're looking so tired. Is it your chronic fatigue or your old age syndrome that's acting up tonight? Your old lady syndrome. Old lady syndrome. Chronic fatigue or old lady syndrome? Because you know that's I said it's my grandchildren syndrome. See, I have to I have to squat down whenever I'm talking. <laughs> yeah, that, he I, thinks that's so cool that he's now finally taller than Nan. <laughs> Boy. But we've had we haven't had any too many crises. Let's see, night before last. <laughs> Although this was kind of funny. Well, it wasn't funny at the time, but, huh? What about the gum crisis? Oh, yeah, I already told him about that. But I woke, it was like, I'd fallen asleep at midnight, and I was dead sound asleep, and I feel somebody patting me. And I open my eyes, and there's, oh, his folks are on there. They're going to have a heart attack when I tell them this, because they don't know this yet. But I open my eyes, and there's Jack standing looking at me and he's got blood everywhere that is not a way a grandma wants to wake up in the middle of the night from sleep and he looks at me he says i'm thinking oh my goodness i have to stay calm here but there's blood all over this kid and he said <clears throat> he said nan i think i have a nosebleed i was just so grateful it was just a nosebleed i didn't know if an axe murderer had got in there after him or what those nosebleeds do so much damage <laughs> they do it looks like someone chopped you up to bits but he was very calm about it he just woke me up and said i got a nosebleed nan so we got took care of that then the next morning we were going to take we got brave enough to take buster for a walk again and we were taking him over to the park and i'm walking buster and yeah, they know now, Denise, that's for sure. But I'm walking Buster, and Jack is riding his bike. I took the lazy way out. I, I drove in the car. Buster and I drove in the car, and we followed him along the sidewalk over to the park. And he was riding his bike and 
going for it. And I looked up, and there is Jack crashing and burning and flying through the air. And I thought, oh, no, emergency room, boat, broken arm or something. I go running over to him. Thank goodness he fell this way instead of that way because uh, he fell on really soft, cushy ga uh, grass. I don't know if, if I told Tar and Mike about this either. But if he fell the other way, he would have hit the sidewalk. And he would have hit concrete that. really bad. He did have his helmet on, so that was good. And he just had had a bruise on it, on his side and a little scraped knee. So that was the other thing. And it's just been piddly things like this for the past couple of days. So that's probably why I'm looking a little tired. Come Friday or Monday, oh, by Monday, by the time I get through two birthdays, it's like, I don't know if I'm going to even be standing up come Monday, but we survived all of them. Dave, I need you over here. I just lost my assistant. So do we have any more questions? Um, ask for questions. Yeah, do we have any questions? And guess we'll wrap this up. When did it happen? It happened yesterday, Michael. Michael wouldn't know when it happened. I didn't tell mom and dad all these things because we just had so many different things happen. Oh, then we went to the post office the same day and they had a package in. They have like those, what are they we called? Cluster, the cluster mailboxes. And so we went to the mailbox to get the, all the mail and everything. Opened up, they, had a pa they have a special section where you take a key and you get it. If you have a box, you get it out that section could we couldn't get the key to work so then we had to drive I had to drive over to the mail um, what's it called post, post office, office. <laughs> I'm getting brain dead here I had to drive for the second time that day over to the post office and said this key isn't gonna work I can't get my package out he said oh ma'am we don't take care of them Tar and Mike live in Mead and he said you'll have to go to Long Mob which is about 15 20 minutes deal with them and have them come do the package I'm thinking are you kidding? The post office here in town doesn't take care of that type of thing. So, yes, Dave? Uh, Kay Roma wants to know, what are the bargains you bought the other day? What bargains I the bought? Good the good bargains from, like, the thrift store and stuff. From the thrift store? I Well, I haven't bought any since I've been here. Uh, just these things were shown. I showed you tonight were some of the ones that I bought. I don't know if you missed them. I showed a few things that I bought. Like I got the knitting needles for um, six pairs for like, Ooh, will you? Want, I forget I what it was. Dollar ninety eight, two ninety eight, something like that. I can't remember now. My brain's not I working. Want to start knitting. You want to? I'll have to teach you to knit. Uh, but I'll have some more. I'll try to have some more on the next time. I'll round up a few more things. Oh, and I got my top. This was one of my more expensive tops, but I loved it. It's polka dots. It's green. It's a nice sleeve length. Everything. It fits me really good. And I paid. Uh, two ninety eight for this one. I don't usually pay that much, but I did this time because I really, really love this top, and it's my birthday, so I'm going to use part of my birthday money for it. Any more questions, Dave? And otherwise, we'll go ahead and rest. I don't know what we're doing. Like I said, it'll be Jack's birthday, so I haven't quite figured out. That's going to be the next live stream. It's just going to be birthday stuff. Yeah, so. it'll. We'll have a live stream, but I, I might show you a couple of hints, maybe on. Wrapping the stuff. presents and things like that. Oh, so, thank you, Angela. This. Huh? I won't be able to be here because you'll be wrapping presents in front of me. I will be wrapping presents in front of you and you'd see them, huh? Those are going to so, be my presents. And, yeah, Dave's going to have one, too, and day after that, then. So, I'm just going to you know, have a lot. After the day after. It's oh. on Sunday. On Jackie Sunday. says, happy birthday, Joe. I am going to have a birthday myself in a couple of weeks, too. So. I think it's like the 28th. 23rd. 23rd. Nan's oh, birthday well, is on the 23rd. So it's not yet, but it's this month. So, Go yes, ahead. yes, Susan, it's this month on the 23rd. Thank you for all the birthday wishes, everybody. Okay, I guess we'll go ahead and close it. Don't forget uh, the Homestead Network. Uh, do a shout out if you guys want to put your uh, links on there. If you guys want to put your YouTube links out on the Facebook or YouTube side from the Homestead Network, go ahead and do that. Oh, Denise just said that uh, if you're watching the CMT Awards tonight, that her son might be on it. So you might check that out. Uh, no, I don't know, Stephanie, when I'll do the, the sewing class. What I'll do is probably have to make it into a video sometimes so and so don't forget dining on a dime our french toast is on page 55 and the guys will put up a link for it if you want dining on a dime cookbook oh yeah 
and I guess we will see you on Friday if there's no more questions or anything. So, see you guys later. Thanks for sh for watching us. We love you all. Bye bye. Hey, okay. Bye. Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is gone. Facebook's gone. Oh. YouTube. Goodbye. Bye YouTube.